If you ever wondered how to craft an inspiring sci-fi poster that transports viewers to distant galaxies and alternate realities, you are in the right place. I am Mr. 23 and I am excited to guide you through the process step by step. By the end of this tutorial, you will have the skills to craft your very own sci-fi masterpiece. I really love this picture, I use it uh, in another artwork and uh, I love this uh, center with the lake and the mountains. And then I added a mask and selected what I needed. Then on the left side I added uh, this picture, I really love this uh, left mountain and also because the picture had a lake, added a mask and selected that part. Then I use this picture behind everything and I place it so I can have those big mountains in the back. In the foreground, here in the front, I wanted this part of this picture, so I added a mask and now all we need is a sky. So I found this picture with the sky and the mountains and I place it in the back of all the mountains pictures that I had. Now because we have the sky and basically we have our uh, light source, this part, this image with the mountains doesn't really look that well because it doesn't have the correct uh, lightning and also the contrast. So we need to fix that. I use a really cool uh, technique, really easy. You go to image adjustments and here you select shadows and highlights and instantly you will see a lot of changes into your image and uh, you can play around with uh, those uh, sliders depending on what type of uh, result you want. Then I uh, started to add some Gaussian blur starting with the image with the sky. So because this image is the furthest away, I added a four pixels Gaussian blur and then I moved on to the other images and added um, less blur, uh, three pixels and uh, two pixels to this uh, left one and one pixel to this one. And here in uh, this part, I really didn't like all the elements that uh, were around there, the fence and the wires, so and also some parts of the lake and the mountain. So I used the clone stamp tool and I um, hide and replace some parts. And now we have this area cleaner. Now we need to fix the colors. So for this mountain here on uh, the middle, uh, I wanted to have the same color tones as the uh, mountains in the back. So the easiest way for me to do that was to take the sovereign brush, the default sovereign brush and uh, select by holding alt a color from that mountain in the back and to draw with that color on the mountains. So. And the next step was to set the blending mode to color and I reduced the opacity a bit and now my mountains look much uh, better uh, like the ones in the back. And then I added uh, a levels adjustment layer where I have increased the contrast. And I did the same thing to this mountain by using a layer set to color and I have also added contrast by dragging this middle slider to the right. The noise filter makes everything blend much better together and add more realism to the images. So let me show you. So this is the left mountain without uh, the, the noise filter and with the noise filter it looks like that. It's really simple to add a noise filter. You create a new layer, reset the swatches, the colors from here, from the bar by uh, pressing the letter D and you'll have uh, black on top and white beneath. Take the paint bucket tool and fill it with black. Fill that layer with black, go to filter and here noise, add noise and a set amount to 400 monochromatic, select it and Gaussian, hit OK. Then go to filter and here you can choose Gaussian blur and uh, add like uh, one, two pixels depending on your image size and then go and change the normal to lighten, just decrease the opacity to uh, 10, uh, 20%, something like that. And then I added the same noise filter to the other parts of uh, my image. And then in front of the sky, I added uh, levels adjustment layer where I have added more contrast. I will add some 
missed some fog between each part that I have added so far. I just create a new layer and I take a fog brush, cloud brush, something like that. I'm painting behind those mountains on the right side and then I set the blending mode to screen and if I think that's too much I am just lowering the opacity of that layer and that's it. For this image in the foreground I added some levels and I have darkened up uh, only the bottom area because that's closer to our eyes and it should be darker than the things that are farther away. And then to really show that I have my uh, light source coming from the left I created a new layer and I set the blending mode to color dodge and with a sovereign brush and a darker color something uh, really grayish like that I painted on that area of the sky and now I have uh, created the uh, illusion that uh, the lights are really coming more from the left and because it's uh, a sci-fi edit, I couldn't uh, move Dawn without adding a sci-fi ship. So I found this one on Shutterstock and I uh, place it here. And now let's fix this ship so it matches the rest. First thing, I added a Gaussian blur, not too much, just one pixel because it was too sharp and the rest of course is blurry because the ship is further away and it should be blurred. Then as I said, um, the, for me at least the fastest way, I don't know if it's the best but for sure is the fastest way to color match uh, quickly something is to create a layer, set it to color and just paint with uh, background color and uh, now it blends much better with the rest and because we have the light source coming from top uh, left we should uh, fix the lightning on the ship so first thing i added the uh, levels adjustment layer where i have darkened up uh, the right side and uh, beneath area and then with uh, exposure i increase the exposure and i have added some lights on the top area where we have the lights coming from and now because we have those uh, really intense black levels and uh, the black levels of the ship should be you know uh, lower because uh, the darkest area of our design should be this dark this uh, black level let's say and here we shouldn't have uh, that much uh, intense black so we need to fix that a really easy way is to create an exposure adjustment layer and uh, here you can play around uh, with offset and gamma correction so if you drag this gamma correction to the left you will see uh, that uh, it will uh, brighten up those darker areas and then if you drag this offset to the right you will see that uh, those black levels won't be uh, that uh, powerful I uh, added of course some atmospherical fog so I created a new layer take a fog brush and just paint in front of the ship so now uh, the ship looks much uh, better because it's blended with the background and then I uh, added a small reflection in the water for the ship and uh, I added uh, here on the engines part I added some lights uh, using a layer set to linear dodge and also uh, one set to color dodge so basically you create a new layer and uh, you set it to linear dodge and take the sovereign brush take the orange in this case and if you start to paint it will do something like that and it looks bad <coughs> then you have to fix it by double clicking on the layer and here you should use the blend if so hold alt and drag the right slider to the right and you'll see that that powerful color it will disperse and it will integrate much better with the rest and then on top I added a new layer and I set it this time to color dodge and I take the same brush and uh, paint it on top and now we have more colors on that area how can we have a sci-fi piece without a character and uh, I uh, tweaked some things because the lower part uh, from uh, the legs part it's uh, really foggy and the top part it's more visible. I selected her 
for Sphinx and then I uh, edit a curves adjustment layer where I have added uh, some contrast then I placed her here and uh, I had to fix some things first I added a contact shadow on a layer set to multiply and then a longer shadow on the same layer set to multiply because we have the lights coming from the left and I added more contrast by using curves and then by adding an exposure adjustment layer I increase the exposure and paint it on her left side where we have the lights uh, coming from and then that trick that I showed you with the uh, color matching I added a layer set to color and uh, now she has uh, that bluish tone as i moved on with this artwork i didn't really like the roses and i tried to mask them using clone step tool that uh, took me a lot of time and i really didn't like uh, this color because it uh, was the same color as the jacket so i added a hue and saturation and made it green and then i moved on by adding more lights using uh, exposure i just painted on some areas after I increase the exposure. I added the same noise filter on the character and I painted her hair uh, in another color, this pinkish uh, color and I added some uh, glasses on her eyes. I uh, changed the texture of the shirt by adding uh, some uh, camouflage uh, texture over there. Then I uh, painted some uh, rim lights and using my uh, rim lights method with a linear dodge that I explained here in this tutorial much much better if you don't know it I painted some uh, rim lights on the hair and on the other parts of her body and because recently I have created a lot of staffs I couldn't move on without uh, placing that staff on her back Talking about that stuff, I'm really proud to announce you that I created a 36 staff pack so you can use into your artworks. They are really easy to use, you just drag and drop them and you don't have to worry about their size because they are already high quality transparent PNGs at 300 dpi. You can download them on Patreon, Artstation, Gumroad or even Etsy. They are really cheap and it will support this channel a lot if you would purchase them. The download is in the video description. Then I added some glow on the staff by using the by using the gradient map uh, technique of uh, the magic that I always use. First thing you need to create a group, set it to screen. Then inside the group, create a layer set to black. Then create a gradient map. Those are the colors that I have used in the gradient map in the middle. On top of that uh, layer that uh, you have filled with black, create a new layer, take uh, the brush tool and the white color. This is important to have the white color. And then if I press once, you'll see it will add some glow over there. But if I continue to press, it will add more glow. And this is how usually I paint, uh, you know, those uh, magic trails that I use in my designs then here in the foreground in the front i have added uh, some uh, parts of uh, grass and trees and something like that and uh, i added uh, levels to dark them up and i drag the white slider to the left and then i added some gaussian blur to some of them because uh, they are in front and they should be uh, blurry and of course the design isn't complete without, without some sci-fi structures. So I added those buildings here on the left side. How to create that shape is really easy. You create a solid color adjustment layer and you set it to a color. Then you go to on the mask and invert the mask. And then here on the mask I uh, used the polygonal lasso tool and I uh, started to draw some shapes. After I finished, I uh, pressed uh, delete on the mask and we have our shape. Because the edges are too sharp, you go to the mask properties and on the feather you just drag the feather to the right and you will have a blur on the sides. And that's really cool. I added some uh, darker areas in my case by using levels. So I added a levels adjustment layer, hold alt and click between the layers to clip that levels to affect only the building and then I dragged 
the slider to the right. The same thing, I went to the mask and inverted the mask. Then I took the polygonal lasso tool and I selected uh, some areas on my building and I started to uh, create some shapes over there and then I pressed the delete on the mask and I did the same thing with the feather. I dragged the feather to add a blur to that part because we had the uh, lights coming from the left I added some uh, lights with exposure so uh, I uh, used exposure and increased the exposure and offset to add some lights coming from the left. Then I uh, painted with a bright color, white bright color on the buildings to hide them better. And then I decided to add some windows here. So I drew some squares that I duplicated many times and then I placed them there. I added some lights. I created another solid color adjustment layer and I painted there and there some uh, squares uh, of lights. And on top of them, I created a solid color that I set to color dodge and the color is this blue to add uh, more lights on those windows and when I finished I added more fog uh, to hide those buildings in the clouds and the mountains and then I created another solid color adjustment layer that I have set to color dodge and I created some rays of light that are coming from those buildings and I painted more uh, lights on another layer set to color dodge with a blue color and then on adobe stock i found this planet and i used that picture here set the blending mode to overlay and uh, added a mask decrease the opacity to 30 percent i added a small glow here on the left on a layer set to screen then i made some uh, rings like saturn has take the ellipse tool and uh, here on top, if you have pixel select shape, you can uh, make a circle now and it has uh, a stroke already and you can change the color of the stroke to white and you can, you know, increase the stroke to a different amount. Then you can uh, duplicate this layer uh, by pressing Ctrl and J and uh, make it uh, smaller a bit smaller by holding alt while you're uh, making it smaller and then take again the elliptic uh, tool to decrease the stroke so uh, i'm decreasing the stroke and now we have two circles of different dimensions select both of them and then right click on them and rasterize layers and then you can press ctrl and i to merge them together and then press ctrl t hold shift and drag the top area and uh, you can rotate this one make it uh, bigger and place it on your planet uh, let me hide the other ones that i created so you can see better so i place it over there and then i add a mask and mask uh, the area that should be behind the planet uh, something like that let's add a blur Gaussian blur and I will add uh, two or three pixels uh, Gaussian blur to it and then I will add another blur this time um, motion blur so uh, I will select the direction here and um, more uh, distance something like that and hit OK and then just lower the opacity I want to show you now a thing that I always do at the end of my artworks which is really cool. Uh, you create a screenshot of all the layers that you have so far by pressing Ctrl Alt Shift and I. Double click on the layer and here on channels where you have the red, the green, the blue, you deselect one color. Now I want to deselect the green color and then hit OK. Uh, nothing happened on the screen of course but you'll see the magic in just one second. So press Ctrl T to, to transform that uh, layer and right click on the screen and now choose warp. And for example, here on this area, I will hold Ctrl until you see that cross on the screen, click once and now I will drag this point to the right. This is a chromatic aberration and uh, this helps, especially the sci-fi cyberpunk designs look uh, much much uh, better so uh, i did that here this point and then i will move on and add uh, another one by holding ctrl i click here once and i drag a bit not too much i drag a bit 
uh, one two pixels to the right and I can repeat the process wherever I want to add that, uh, that uh, chromatic aberration. This is without, this is with, so it's up to you if you want to have uh, those uh, chromatic aberration on your design. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this video to keep me motivated to post high quality videos like this one.